Laura Fagan, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Laurie, a few of us were sitting in the office yesterday and we were scrolling through the website, looking at the inappropriate gifts, and we were laughing our heads off. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the, the moment you came up with this genius idea. It actually came from a problem I was trying to solve. So, my brother who lives in the UK, I was looking for a gift for him. So, I looked online and he has an inappropriate sense of humour. And I couldn't find anything I liked. So I ended up making him, he works for Kia, made him a mug and a pen. I won't tell you what was on it. Um, and no. Okay. okay. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> um, <laughs> and he loved it. And um, my friend said, these are actually quite funny. You know, can you make me one? So it just started as, as a bit of a hobby. As an idea. So just an idea yep. to solve a problem. Yeah. So before you tell me about getting the business off the ground. Sure. You've worked for 20 years in HR. Yes. The, quite the opposite to this, these inappropriate gifts. Yes. Did, did that help you discover, or was it somewhat frustrating that help you to discover that you wanted to, this is where you should be? Yes. <laughs> so um, as an HR manager, look, I loved the HR side of things. I yeah. love working with people, um, but it gave me so much material. So I think after 20 years, I was a little bit... Um, I don't know whether it was a midlife crisis, actually, but um, I'd be at work and all the times I'd be smiling at people saying, I understand, and then I'd go home and somehow have to get some of this frustration out. So I'd put it on a mug. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd spend all my day being uh, in the office telling people how to act appropriately. Um, and then but in, my, in the back of your mind? Uh, my alter ego was the inappropriate HR manager, yeah. Brilliant. I lived a, I lived a double life. <laughs> So, so well, when you were coming, were you thinking during that whole time? I want to. You did you have a drive that you wanted to set up your own business? Was it in your head that you wanted to do something of your own? It was, but it wasn't formalized. I I didn't actually start out thinking I want to be a business person. No, it was I wanted to do something that I found fun. I'd lost the fun in life. Well, you so. certainly have found that. Yes. <laughs> so okay, so you d you designed this cup for your brother. Yeah. And then tell me about then how this okay. developed into the business. So I started off really as a hobby um, and I created a few mugs. That was my um, creative outlet and it was fun. And I set up a basic website. And I probably did that because my husband, let's call him Budget Ben because that's what he is. Okay. He said to me, honey, they're funny, but I don't think anyone will buy them. And I don't know if you're married, but the minute your husband says, <laughs> I don't think it's going to work, <laughs> something inside of it. you... <laughs> Drives you to go, I'm going to make it work. So, um, And he's into websites and computers and everything. And he says, you don't even know how to set up a website. And luckily nowadays, you can do it all online really easily. So I set up a very basic website and yeah. went from there. And Okay, so you set up the website and promoting the website. So nobody knows about this website at this so, stage? Sure. So I created at the same time an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Okay. Yeah, for the company as well as for a group which I called Inappropriate Mums. And that is mums like me that have an inappropriate sense of humour. We want to share memes or memes and stories, but we don't want to put it on our Facebook page yeah, because we don't want the other mums judging are inappropriate humour. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at the same time, all of this was happening. So I had social channels and yeah. a basic website. Yeah. And so then at what point did you think, I'm onto something? Okay. There was one very distinct point mm. um, when one of my mugs actually went viral. So it hit nearly 10 million views. Oh, wow. So what... Can you tell us what that was Am on? Am I allowed to swear? Well, you can give us a good sense of okay, what was on so it. So the mug said, I'm not feeling very talky today. Off you, F. Off you, <laughs> And that got 10 million views. It got 10 million views. And so what used to happen is I'd have two or three orders maybe a day. I'd pack them, go down to the post office, write a little note to my customers. And then my website started getting 200 orders in per day for a week wow. and I had to turn the website off. I had to turn it off because I just knew I couldn't fulfil that many orders by myself and I thought to myself, well, this has actually got legs. This business has got legs. So let's close that website. Let's do this properly and structure ourselves so that we can actually fulfil those orders. Fantastic. Actually, we've got some of them here. Okay. So a lot of them are designed at the office, probably from years, your yes. years in HR. So we've yes. got this one. I survived another meeting that should have been an email. These are the tamer 
Yeah, these are the one. <laughs> this is the one chili range. These are absolutely. I'll actually just turn that around. And we there. go up to three chilies. <laughs> three chilies. And <laughs> how profane they are! Um, you can't cure stupid, but you can sedate it. Seemingly with yes. <laughs> that's our nurse range. <laughs> so you just have that sitting on your desk. <laughs> And then we have a mouse pad. If idiots could fly, this place would be an airport. <laughs> <laughs> so these are these are these are quite tame. These are safe. These are safe. Um, we did look through, right? And I see a lot of use of the word. That's the C word, the yes. F word, and yes. it's littered throughout. You have yes. wine bottles with yes. the C word on it. Yes. Fantastic. So. <laughs> But where do, you, is, where do you draw the line? Like okay. is, is, there, is there a point, do you say, yes. too far? Um, well, a lot of people might think that, that the C word was too far. Um, with And I test a lot of my material with the inappropriate mums. So I find that if they find it funny and they're not offended by it, my target market won't be. Great, yeah. So I think with words like that, it's a very derisive word, but if you use it in the right context, it's absolutely fine. So, um, <laughs> But where I draw the line as an HR manager is around ethics and morals. So, you know, it's fine to take the mickey out of ourselves um, and anyone else, but, you know, I stay away from uh, religion and disability and things like that. That's just not funny. But yeah. certainly swear words, yeah, no You're, problem. Yeah, free game. Yeah. So you tested out in the inappropriate moms group. Yes. How many people are on that group? So now we have nearly 14,000 members and they're all um, across the world. So... Um, right, okay. And if they find something funny, then I know that I've probably hit the target the, market. So that's a great way to kind of test a market. It's a brilliant way to test the market. Um, Facebook and Instagram are, you know, they're free platforms. Um, you can test anything yeah. and you can really tell from the response and the engagement you get whether it's then worth going ahead and producing a product. Yeah, yeah. So you, when you, so you set this up, the inappropriate moms, you set that group up yourself? Yes. And how long did it take to get to 14,000? So I set it up around about the time I first did my first website. Yeah. So that would have been at the end of 2016. So it's taken two years. But it's still a great number. And but it's a very engaged um, group and it's um, a closed group. So we vet who goes into it really carefully. Yeah. Um, so I like to call it a prestigious group. I'd, say it's, I'd it's say it's hilarious. It's not any <laughs> old uh, Facebook group. <laughs> I'd say it's hilarious. Um Okay, so then you got the website up and so you closed it down. And so then you I got closed the it down. It was, it was a going. Wix website. I went to Shopify. Shopify is, from an e-commerce perspective, a, right. a really good website. So um, then my husband said, "Oh, well done. This might actually make us some money. I'll mm. help you." Budget Ben. Thanks, Budget, Budget Ben. ben. <laughs> Budget Ben came in and was happy, and um, then I resigned from my HR role to do this full time. So that was after just the one mug going off. You decided, yes, we're off here. Yes. Okay. Great. Yes. It, can I just ask, um, just with the manufacturing? So, sure. just somebody for somebody who has no idea, like, yes. do you did you go overseas to get these manufactured, like the cups and the cushions? No. And I get it all done in Australia. You can go overseas and look as we scale up. There's economies of scale to go to China, but I wasn't versed in dealing with um, Chinese or imports or anything like that. So I would just buy in a really small quantity and I would design in-house and then um, get them made here. And I used to ship them out individually and now I um, ship out via a warehouse. So okay. I use what they call a 3PL, a third-party yep. logistics warehouse, okay. and that links to my sh Shopify store. So I put all my product there yep. and then um, when you order online, it goes directly to that warehouse and they pick pack and ship for me okay so the, yeah so, so it's all done via technology so what does scaling up the business look like so scaling up is we now have a warehouse in the uk so um any i found i had a lot of being from the uk originally a lot of um, customers over i there. had a lot of english customers and they didn't quite rightly didn't really want to pay the shipping from Australia to yeah. England for yep. one mug. So um, we replicated our setup here over in the UK and um, we're hoping to do the same for the States too. Brilliant. And so with the, with the price point, to get that price point, was it hard to get the price point right? Yes and no. You work from a commercial perspective, so you need a certain margin to actually make it worth your while doing. Okay. Um, and price, as long as you don't price yourself out of the market yep. um, and you add value. So our value is in the unique products that you can't 
find anywhere else yeah. um, and in the customer service that we give our customers. So, no, the pricing, the market tells you, yeah, if, you exactly. if you've got it right. Great, great. And when you said, sorry, when you said there about the competitors, mm. so you don't really have any competitors? No, there's lots of probably um, small businesses like Etsy, for example, is full mm. of, you know, people that were doing what I was doing two years ago. Yeah. M making one mug and sending it out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I come up and uh, my market comes up with ideas all the time. So as right. soon as uh, something gets copied, we're on to the next thing. Brilliant, brilliant. And we're lucky, in fact, that um, you're not going to find Target or Big W stocking many of, our, many of our three chilli range. Great. They <laughs> the three so they chili. can't undercut us. <laughs> We have a, um, a couple of questions from the audience. Um, was it hard resigning from your job and turning back on your turning your back on your career? No. <laughs> Twenty years in HR. Uh, sorry, let me let me qualify that answer. I was lucky that towards the end, I've worked for lots of different types of companies in HR, so not for profit, big corporates. And I ended up with a small, um, privately owned business, and I knew the managing director very well. So. He knew what I was up to and it was with his permission um, and, and complete, you know, congratulations that I left. So I left on very good terms. Yeah. Um, it was a construction company. So, of course, when they found out that the lovely proper HR manager was actually creating mugs with the C word on it, my coolness factor went through the roof. <laughs> it's brilliant. And so your ex-colleagues in HR... Oh, they, they love it. Do they, yeah. do they love it? Are they, yes. are they doing bulk buys for the offices? <laughs> they, they love it, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I have another one. How did it take... Um, how long did it take to put the infrastructure in place? Was it a steep learning curve? It's, it's still a learning curve. So it's um, anything scaling up from nothing to where we want to get to is a learning curve. With technology, it wasn't as difficult as it would have been five or ten years ago. Yeah, it's For amazing. example, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Facebook and Instagram, you can do free advertising on if, if you know what you're doing. Yeah. And you build, yeah, they call it a tribe, but if you, if you build your market, that's, um, that's all free. Shopify, you pay monthly. You can get your registered domain name really easily. And I'm not a tech person. So I would say for anyone that wants to do it, now is the time they make it so easy for you. It's yeah, it's technology. I know because yes. um, Jess is in the audience, um, one of our reporters, and she did a story on how to run. You can run a business from your phone using these five apps. Absolutely, yeah. you can, and you can set it up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And so, any hurdles? What was the biggest hurdle you faced? Um, the biggest hurdle once we got over, or once I got over the initial thing of actually this could work, and, and I'm fully invested in it. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the things you have to believe in in what you're selling or what you're going to do because if you don't believe in it and you're relying on other people to tell you that it's going to work, it's not. You know, you have to have that internal drive and do something that you love. So the hurdles is once you've got that self-belief that you that you love what you're doing, yep. um, the rest will come. And the other hurdle which will still be there is, you know, we're still a small business. We've got big competition, changing technologies all the time and, and cash flow. You know, cash is king to a, to a business scaling up. So Yeah, cash flow for small business. Yes. And so who, did somebody inspire you? Is there a big inspiration that you have? Well, I've been lucky enough to work with Naomi Simpson and she inspires me. Okay, well, let's talk about that now. Yeah. You went on to Shark Tank and tell me about that. Sure. So Shark Tank, um, and it's called Dragon's Den in, in some places too, is a program where entrepreneurs pitch their business idea to five, they call them sharks, who are successful business people. And uh, if they like their, your idea, then they'll um, offer to work with you. Okay. So you decided this is my opportunity. I'm going to apply to go on to Shark Tank. I was. I was drinking a glass of wine and I saw an advert which is what I do quite often. I saw an advert on the TV and Naomi Simpson was saying that the uh, auditions were open. And I just started laughing to myself because I actually thought, I didn't actually think I'd get that far, but I did think it would be funny to stand up in front of those five um, with my products. And, and that itself just spurred me on because I just thought it, was, it will be funny, even if I don't get anywhere. Um, it will make people laugh. It will make people laugh Fun. and that's what I love doing. So... The first audition, um, got through the first audition. The second one where you have to actually pitch, you know, to some fake sharks, got through that. And then before I knew it, I was similar to this, actually, standing in a studio, staring at five people. Uh, pitching the idea. Going. So you would have had to, for them, now, what happened? Did you get offers? You got yes, the five I offers? Yes, I got all five, five offers, yeah. Wow. 
and I ended up um, choosing Naomi because well, she's in the gifting business. She's had the journey that you know I'm about to go on, and I just I just think she's great. So, so Naomi Simpson is the founder and owner of Red Balloon. If anyone doesn't know the gift, um, the gift and experience business. Yes. Yes. So she offered you how much did she offer? So she offered two hundred and fifty thousand for twenty five percent. Okay. And did you go with that? No. <laughs> Oh, you didn't go with that? Well, we ended up, so after the show, you go through a separate process, a due diligence process where you work on um, what structure you want. So we ended up with a different structure to that, um, more of a mentorship structure. So I've been working in her offices for the last year, um, working with her team, accessing her contacts and her knowledge. Oh, brilliant. And keeping what I wanted to keep from an equity perspective. So Just tell me how it works then. So you didn't accept the the 250k offer, but you... Took a mentorship. Is yes. That a, yes. Okay. Yeah. And why? Tell me why you didn't accept the the injection of a quarter of a million. Oh, uh, because it goes after that. It goes through to different stages. So there were different offers on the table after that. Um, and I actually wanted the me- mentorship rather than to give away the equity in the company. So you kept one hundred percent equity. Yes. And looking back now, are you glad with that decision? Yes. Has that benefited? And I still get all the benefits of working with someone who. It, has been there and done that and you know her team at BRG have been great I've been in there annoying them for the last year <laughs> I'm taking my gifts in <laughs> um, oh, are they, are, is, is Naomi is Red Balloon featuring some of your gifts um no no I just take my gifts in to annoy her in the office oh. <laughs> <laughs> excellent excellent and did um so what from that experience and having those mentors and I know mentorship is Huge it for small is, business. It is huge because you don't know what you're doing. So in order, you can feel your way. But really what I went on to Shark Tank for, it wasn't necess- It wasn't really the money. It was they've been there and they've done it and they've learnt with 10 years, 15 years experience. They could give that to me in a year, save me burning up my cash learning it. Yeah. And that that is what was really valuable. I have more questions from the audience. Thanks, audience. Um can you share some of the most inappropriate stories from your HR days? I don't think I'm allowed to. Um, but I will be bringing out a book, Confessions of an HR Manager. Oh, wonderful. Love it. That's a good idea. Is it? Oh, is that what you just thought that idea now? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Right, I might need to copyright that. Um, but look, it's the same with anyone, you know. When you work with people, you can never predict what's going to happen. Um, yeah. And I think... I think now as well that it's um, it's got a little bit too PC. Um, there's reasons for it, and there's you know there's absolute um, you know as an HR manager there's things that you cannot do in the workplace, and there's behaviours that you should not tolerate. But at the same time, there is sometimes you go a bit too far. You know you haven't said hello in the right tone of voice, and all of a sudden you're being bullied. You know that's not um, that's not fun. Yeah, I saw that on one of your mugs was. Um on the website said 2018 was the year of of PC of, of, of a sense of humor 2018 everyone got offended let's hope 2019 everyone has a sense of humor and do you think that is that's that's the way companies have gone and do you think it's it's gone overboard I th- as a HR as a HR person I think companies have no choice you know they have to provide a safe workplace for people and sure. there is a yeah. huge rise in bullying and stress and anxiety at work so I, I think it's actually a fact of the world we live in yeah um, for me personally my life wasn't fun anymore you know stress anxiety none of that's fun and I wanted to bring some fun back so for me that's through humor um, and yeah. that's that's how I deal with the stress of life um, yeah, it's through humour. Yeah, and that's great. And and is that why? So now you're just enjoying your like your job so much more. Yes. Yeah, I love what I do. And do you financially speaking? Yep. Comparing now, what you're earning now compared to when you were um, full time in HR, how has does it compare? Um, it's better now. Um, and that was one of the things Budget Ben said to me. He said, "Honey, I'll support you in anything you want to do." as long as you bring home net the same amount of money as you do as an HR manager. That's a fair, fair game, Budget well, Ben. <laughs> well, it is fair game, Budget Ben. So, um, and he now Hi, works... Budget ben. <laughs> Hi, Budget Ben. Um, hashtag Budget Ben. He's got his own Instagram account. He doesn't know he has. <laughs> um, he's only got about five followers. 
<laughs> but after this, he might have more. Um, where was I going with that, Sarah? So you were talking about... Oh, I was talking about money. You were trying to ask me how much I I'm earn. I'm asking how much you earn. Let's just, let's just cut to the chase, guys. Let's cut to the chase. <laughs> how much are you making? <laughs> um, or like any business, we structure the business as a profit, um, as, a, as a company. Yep. And uh, we follow our profit first principle whereby we put money in different buckets to make sure we have enough for everything. And so I pay myself the same salary as I did as an HR manager. Lovely. And, and my husband, who was a um, strategic solutions manager for IT, yep. who was on a very nice salary, he's had to come down a level because um, I don't want to pay him the same amount of money as he was getting paid. So both of us now work full time in the company. And it's like anything, when you're wor- running your own company, um, yeah, you know that everything you do is going to bring a dollar back to yourself, which is which is fantastic. No, it's great. But I won't be travelling on uh, first class anytime soon, Sarah. Oh, you never know. This Unless you guys buy loads of my products. Buy them. <laughs> <laughs> and projections. Um, sure. How big do you want to take this? Well, our big, hairy, audacious goal was, was 2020. 2020. And that's what I pitched to the sharks. So that was 20 million by the year 2020. Um, I don't think we'll get there. But 20 that's million turnover. Yeah. But that was uh, why well, it's a big, hairy, audacious goal. So you've got to reach up there. Absolutely. Um, so projections will be the first year was a million. Um, we're on track to get three million for the second year. And then the third year. 20. 20. Yeah, well, that's next yeah. year. Yeah, Excellent. Then I can travel on first class. <laughs> Back to first class. We have a few more questions. Um, do, you, do you think there'll be a time that your mugs will actually go into Woolies? Or Coles? Um, or any shops? No. So, no. No. Not for our brand. Um, we want to keep it to, um, to business to consumer. So we want to directly go to the consumer we don't want to go through because once you go through Kmart or Big W um, you're just a commodity then Um, and I think there is a climate where those um, swearing is acceptable now so you'll see a lot of adverts for example I'm seeing a lot of adverts the the KFC advert where it just says bucket have you seen that yeah and I think but I think Australian culture is a little bit more accepting. It of is. Those swear it is. Words. It is, and certainly for the C word, Australia is is a lot more accepting <laughs> than the UK, and definitely than the States. So yeah, um, I don't see they'll. I don't think they'll be in Kmart or anywhere soon. So yeah, because that's what I was going to ask. Um, for these products being sold in the States, would you have to tone it back? No, let's <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> they don't like it. Stuff them. <laughs> Um, and were there any of the products, these are more questions from the, from the audience, um, were there any products that didn't work? Lots of products that don't work. And yep. when I say don't work, you sell some, but, um, and, you, and you market them at different times too. So we do a lot of marketing around occasion buying um, and around occasions. So Paddy's Day, Mardi Gras, back in January when we've all feeling a bit fat and you know we've drunk too much. So a, a lot of it's around themes. So sometimes they'll only be in Great. for a short amount of time. Um, and other products that don't work. Yeah, I tried a range of beauty products. They didn't work. So it's, it's about testing. It's yeah. about testing and doing what works and then getting rid of what doesn't work quickly. What's been the most... I know there was the big the mug, the first the mug sellers, that went yeah. off. What, how, what has been one or two of the most popular? Okay, so the mugs are definitely the most popular. So there's a sweary mum mug around at the moment that's actually really popular. Um, and the notebooks... Have been really popular. Yeah, and notebooks are great, and the pens. Yeah, they're probably our biggest sellers. And what would like so the biggest seller in terms of the actual phrase though? Uh, would be the yeah. I'm not feeling very talky today. If somebody had a side hustle, sure, and is thinking they're working full time, maybe not in HR but in full time, and they're thinking I want to do what you've done. Yep. What would be your advice? Do it, but do it because it's fun or you love it um, rather than doing it because you want to get a second income stream because you'll spend money before you make it. So you have to make sure that you're enjoying what it is because if you're not, it won't spur you to get up and get out there and hustle and sell your soul like I've had to do. Yeah, You have to really want – Yeah. so what I found – I think the most difficult thing is actually finding something that you really want to do. Once you've found that, the rest is easy. It's not easy, though, to find that, is it? It's it, not really easy. I think easy. that's the question. How mm. do you find that? Mm. Not how do you turn what you love into a business? Yeah. Um, and I think for many of us, we get stuck in the day-to-day 
hamster wheel of duty and kids and, you know, there's no fun and you kind of lose who you were at school or um, what oh, you the, do. Yeah, the so, dreams. Yeah, so I think you just got to go back in time. What was it that – and one of my bosses once said to me, if you, if you like what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. And at the time I thought, yeah, right. What's she on? What's he, oh, what's he, what's he on? What's she on? <laughs> um, but she she was absolutely right. Right. And, yeah. um, so for me, I thought to myself, what do I love doing? Yeah. And it was buying gifts for people and finding funny memes on the internet. So I thought, well, combine these. How do I combine that? And that's what I did. And when you were, um, so when you were at school, when you said going yes. back to what you were at school, sure. did, did you love designing things or did you have um, hobbies like that? I did, but I wasn't particularly creative. I okay. think what I loved is um, is talking with people and, and, and understanding people. That's what I loved, which is what took me into HR. Yeah. And essentially the gifts really are just a reflection of what people are thinking. You know? <laughs> so true. Um, and giving a gift to somebody is one person um, communicating and having connection with another person. Yeah. Um, it's through a gift, but it's about connection. And yeah. that's really, I think, what I love. So you're still... In the kind of HR area, just the yeah, inappropriate yeah, HR. Just, just a slight difference, yeah. Any bad advice you got along the way? Um, any bad advice I got? Oh, from my mother and mother-in-law, I hope you're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that generation really do not like yeah. the swear words. Um, yeah. No, I don't think I did because if I did, I probably didn't listen to it. Yeah, fair enough. Well, he yeah. obviously didn't. Um, and has anybody, did you have people coming to you saying backlash, any backlash with this or emailing um, you that this is ridiculous, you can't do yes. this? Yes, yes. So was it from just uh, a lot of it general from, people? You know, from socials, you know, for example, I did have a baby range which had a swear word on it. And, I saw that. And, and, you know, they're fine with swear word as long as you don't associate it with a baby. Um, yeah. And look, there will be people that don't like the products. And that's good because they're not my market. If you try and be everything to everyone, you're not going to succeed. So yeah. the more people that don't like it, cement the people that do. Yeah. And um, and you have to have a thick skin because if you, as I said, if you listen to other people and what they think you should and shouldn't do, you Forget wouldn't do us. anything. No, yeah, absolutely. I've got another question. Do you copyright the messages? No. Okay. So anyone can do what I'm doing. No, the reason – you can't copyright anything with profanity in it. They won't let you. Okay. No. So um, so basically – and all of my designs have been copied, will be copied and will continue to be copied. So really mine's all about making sure that, you know, once that last fad is gone, I'm already on to the next one. Um, and really knowing my market and what they want um, right. rather than the actual – product so for you to st so for you to stay in business and kind of barriers to entry to to cut out the competition you have yes. to keep innovating innovating absolutely. innovating absolutely yeah and i think that's what most businesses have to do anyway absolutely unless you've got a really cool invention yeah. um that is legally protected anything can be copied so if you go on the reputation that oh no one's going to copy me You've kind of failed before you begin. You just have to keep giving your customers what they want. Absolutely. Like even though even though your business is not technology, you have no. to keep moving. Absolutely. And with those ideas, do you have like focus groups? Do you ask people to give you ideas for the I'm always on the scout, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> things like Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> well, maths is great at the moment. Can you think of all of the hashtags you could do there? Seriously, um, it's gold. So if you just if you keep your eyes open, the whole world gives you ideas. You know? Yeah. Just what is what are people talking about? Marie Kondo, have you heard of her? Uh, the, the tidy up woman. Oh, there's I a lot do. of material there. Do you, so th it's all, you know, it's just yeah. keeping Keeping um, your eyes open and ears around what your target market is talking yeah. about and what's relevant to them. So you'd be looking at news, what's what's in the oh, news, like Trump or whatever yep. that's happening and then build I've had a things. few people that don't like my Trump merchandise. So I have toilet <laughs> sure paper, Trump toilet paper. <laughs> um, and I did a couple of Trump memes or memes. Yeah. <laughs> Got some backlash from that. That's how you did. But they're not my market. They're so certainly okay. not your market, I can't imagine. Um you mentioned there about family. You have a couple of kids. Yes. What do they think your business? So my daughter is ten and she is very embarrassed. Oh is she? so so when I, I drive a car with one of these magnets on the side saying the inappropriate gift car. 
She's like, Mom, can we take Dad's car? Um, <laughs> so she is – she doesn't like me talking about it. And I, she's actually really good. You know, they don't swear. We don't swear at home in front of the children. And they know that, you know, my work is my work and that it's inappropriate products. Um, yeah. And so she's fine, but she's not – she doesn't tell people what I do. My son couldn't care. He doesn't, you know – He's not interested in us at all. As long as he's got his iPad and a ball, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And um, so, do they always? Did they know they can like? Would they go on the, the website with their friends, say it to them? And no, so they won't go on the website. But we used to get supplies come to our house. So you know, it would normally go into the office, but they would have seen the odd, the odd word. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's great. Um, and. So you obviously, you got things done, you got things moving. You didn't just think about an idea and go, oh, maybe I'll do this. You got it going. Yeah. What, w- what, are we, what would some of your tips be on productivity and getting things sure. done? So I love that book, The, f- the Four-Hour Week, is it? The, Tom the Four-Hour Work Week, Tim yeah. Ferriss. Yeah. Yeah. In there, that's got some, it's all about concentrating on what's important because there, be, there will be so many things you have to get done. Yeah. So as a small... Running your own business, so there's myself, there's Ben, and we have one other lady that works with us. All these plates are spinning, mm. and they're all going to drop at some point. In fact, they're probably dropping now while I'm here <laughs> chatting to you. But um, it's understanding what. <laughs> Go on. Um, it's understanding that the two important things that you have to have done. So where is your value? Where where can you add value? And really just prioritising um, that. And that, I think, is important. So the two things you'd focus on for sort of productivity, where am I adding value? Yes. And what's the second thing? And what are the two most important things I have to do today? Okay. Um, and you go, two, is that all you do each day? But you'd be surprised if you don't focus on those two, you'll do 15 things Absolutely. that actually won't push you forward, whereas you could have just done two. And you're moving. And you're moving. Um, so, yeah, those are – and when we say important, then there's obviously, you know, what's important, what's urgent, what's urgent and important and all of those. So it's understanding that. Um, but, yeah, I just say concentrate on two things a day that are the most important to you that day. Brilliant. And one of those is coming on this program for me today. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we've got one more question. Um, oh, and we think we've just actually asked it. Do people often give you suggestions for the yes. person on the mug? Yes. So we also have a newsletter that goes out to all of our customers. We have about 30,000 um, customers. And yep. um, we often ask for um, suggestions from them. So a lot of our ideas come from our um, come from our customers. Brilliant. Um, and we always ask um, our guests on the show if they had, if we were to hand you twenty thousand dollars now to invest in something or to do anything with, what would you do with twenty k? I'd go on a holiday. No, sorry. <laughs> um, what would I what do? What about the plates? <laughs> the plates would be dropping. <laughs> what would I do with twenty thousand dollars? I would, I would probably invest it in um, in SEO um, SEO research because Google is so powerful mm-hmm. and it's changing. Algorithms are changing all the time. Absolutely. Um, and in that eighty twenty, you know, what's the twenty percent you could actually really add value to? If people could just find my site when they're searching for a funny gift. Boom. Boom. Right now, they probably find it because they've heard of me. Do you hear that Google? Change the algorithm. Change. Bump up in, in a make it gift. cheaper. <laughs> make AdWords cheaper. Yeah. So SEO, having a good SEO person, a good SEO yes. strategy. Yes. Very that, that's where I would invest. To get those organic searches. Yes. Brilliant. So what's next for the business? What's next on the cards? What's the next two things? Next two things are expanding our UK range. Okay. Yep. Um, there's more people in England than there are here. So potentially that's a bigger market. Ireland as well, there's a few people there. I've got so many Irish customers. Of course you do. They are brilliant. (laughs) They are are absolutely brilliant. Um, And then, um, as I said, just keeping on top of new products so that our customers that have come once, when they come back, there'll be something different for them. Brilliant. Well, if I ever have any ideas, I will send them. I'll Please email do. them through to you. Please do. Laurie, well, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much. It's been h- hilarious. Thanks very much and best of luck Thanks with the business. Thanks very much, Sarah. Thanks, Laurie. Thanks, guys. Thank